Well, we got it to run a little bit, so now let's see if we can get it to run a little bit longer. We're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna change the oil because we know it's gonna run, so we can put money into it now. And then two, we're gonna run an auxiliary fuel line from a gas can to the carburetor because I know uh, the gas tank in this is just nasty, nasty. You can actually walk by back here and you can smell the varnish stink coming out of the gas tank. So we're gonna bypass that for now. Um, and I have a bunch of fuel hose and my electric pump. We'll put that on, but first, oil change time. It might be boring to some, but I do like showing uh, the oil coming out of the engine. It kind of gives you an idea of the health of the engine, and what kind of problems you can expect, if it's full of water, if it's full of gas, you know, that kind of thing. This drain plug's way different than mine. And it's definitely bigger than a 5.8. This oil plug bowl is 11 sixteenths. <laughs> That's huge. Sure, I ruined that shot. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the oil looks good. No water in it. Anything like that. Since my Cadillac is so much older than this Cadillac, it took me a little while to find the oil filter. So mine sits about right here because the distributor is in the back. But since they moved the distributor to the front, they had to move the oil filter right there. So it's actually quite far from uh, where the uh, oil fill is or the oil plug is. Um, the only way I can see to get it off is I have a, a wrench on the bottom of it. I have one of those little oil filter cup things you put on to get them off. It's really tight. I'm going to see if I can't get a wrench up on it um, and get it free that way. Oh, come on. So this, as well as the oil uh, drain plug, were so tight. Oh my goodness. Some people need to not change oil. Luckily it's a Wix filter. Old one, but it's a good one. So let's get that out and see what that looks like inside. The Wix 51049, and it is full. That's an old filter. They sure don't look like a... That's funny, at the store I asked for the bigger one, and this is the bigger one. <laughs> it'll fit, and it, it'll be just fine, it's just... Not as big as the capacity filter as the old one, but um, we can always change back to a bigger one later if we need to. What matters is the sealing, the threads on the inside and the seal, so if you look, it's the same size, so we'll put it in. Look how baby it is. It's actually probably easier to get off uh, with the smaller filter, but that's been pre-filled, it's put in. We're going to add some oil to the engine, and then we will go to the uh, makeshift fuel system. Why aren't you just living the high life right here, next to the fan? What a lucky dog. The glove box provided. So whenever you work on something that's new, um, you're not 100% sure, uh, always look at the owner's manual. They actually have useful information. This car has a lot of cool stuff in it that we'll go through in a second, but uh, I want to show you it has a 429 cubic inch, and it says right here, if you're doing an engine oil, uh, it takes four quarts, and with filter change, it's five quarts, so we will put five quarts in. Um, but check this out. I mean, this is all original stuff. It tells you how to work everything. I mean, even just me working on it, I should probably sit down and read that. Here's the uh, accessories manual. I don't know if this is a book or a folder. Twilight Sentinel is the automatic headlight timer. I didn't know about that, so that's cool. So it looks like you can go unlock your door and then it'll automatically turn your uh, headlights off for you. Radio foot control, Cadillac cruise control, license plate frames, rear window defogger, door guards, seat belts, floor mats, horn, ooh, an Eldorado horn, cushion covers, spare tire cover, right hand outside rear view mirror, guide matic power headlamp control, a litter box, a tissue valet, and of course, all the Cadillac-only chemicals that you can buy for your car. That's cool. And here is how to work, of your, work on your power top. Just to lower the top. 
top boot installation, all that good stuff to lower rear window. Interesting. And then the owner protection plan. That's a big protection plan. Looks like we have records all the way back into the 80s when the car had 78K on it. Into the 90s where it had 91. And now it has 95. So since at least 94, it's only been driven about four, 3,000 miles, really. That's cool. Looks like it was sold brand new in Salt Lake and has been in Utah ever since until it came here. I don't know the whole story on the owner, whether it's the the people's father or family, but it's cool. Originally, I was going to run a battery and electric fuel pump, but the ones I have are missing the end. So, we're going even more old school. I have this lawnmower gas tank, which I've used in the past. I haven't used in a long time, but I know it's clean inside and gravity feed works just as well. So, I have a brand new piece of 516 hose, then I have Let's pretend you cut this fuel line right here. I have a little nub that I had in my in my parts right there, screwed into the carburetor. So the other thing I did was I replaced all the little um, rubber tips. And yeah, let's fill it full of gas and make sure that the uh, floats don't stick because they probably will. All right, one last thing we're gonna do. We filled up the gas. Now I want to fill up at least some water in the engine. This is just straight tap water. It's good because once we drain it out and put real stuff in when we check for leaks, it'll help flush it. And that way we're not dumping $30 of coolant. See how much it takes. It was completely, completely bone dry. Hopefully it doesn't take too much. I don't see any huge leaks underneath. I mean, that, that could change. <laughs> we'll do that. And let's get some starting fluid and let's do this thing. Gas is hooked up to the carburetor. Old fuel line is hooked up to a jug. We have new oil. We have a new filter. We filled it full of water. We have a charged battery. Let's see what happens. <laughs> like we are not getting spark we need to figure out why I threw my test light on it no spark so let's pop the distributor cap off take a look at that um, see what our points are doing see if our coil works that kind of thing all right took the top of the distributor out uh, use some sandpaper to clean up these points eventually we will replace them um, but an easy way to test if you have spark is to basically open and close the points and discharge the coil so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this right here next to a ground and then we're going to open and close the points and you'll see spark jump from here to here. So basically that's spark jumping from here to the rotor which then goes with spark plug. Hopefully you guys can see that. If not you can hear it. So. It's strange that it would run when I didn't put gas in the carburetor, and then once I did put gas in the carburetor, it didn't want to run at all. And the weird part is it felt like it was locking up at a certain spot. It makes me think that this carburetor flooded the engine like crazy with gas. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, these spark plugs out. Let's see what it looks like on the plugs. All right, these cylinders aren't numbered. I'm sure the correct firing order. I just did them the way a Chevrolet would do so I can put the spark plug wires back where they're supposed to go. I'm gonna pull up number seven. Smells straight up like gas. That's nasty. Number five, about the same. 
Number three, not as bad. And number one is black and sooty, but not wet. So that makes me think it's got to be something wrong with that carburetor. I'm going to do the other side. We'll look at those plugs. And I think we need a new carb. That's just where we're at. All right, on this side, number eight, is just black and sooty, not wet. And this one is wet and sooty, number six. Number four is just sooty. And number two is not. So I'm thinking the issue is probably on that other bank, and I'm gonna show you why I think that. If you look over here, you can see on the side of the uh, carburetor. You see how it's kind of, they got this like stain, this wetness right here. That wasn't there when we started. So that tells me that that's like a stuck float, you know, gas coming out and filling the cylinder. So I want to turn it over and see if anything sounds any different. Woo! All right, did you guys see that? All kinds of stuff flew out over here. Ugh. You guys saw the little puff? Definitely gas in there. Non-compressible gas. This side doesn't look bad. So, yeah, I'm gonna call it. Uh, let's do a new carburetor on this. All right, guys, welcome back to working on this beautiful 1964 Cadillac convertible. Today, well, we're throwing parts at it, and let me explain why. So, in the last clip or the last video, I don't know how I'm gonna edit this, but Basically, I lost a whole half gallon or so of fuel in hmm, 10 minutes, <laughs> and the car never ran. Basically, what was happening is this carburetor is letting all the gas through into the engine. Basically, the floats are stuck and all that kind of stuff. Now, Now I know some of you are like, we'll take the carburetor off and rebuild it, but there's one thing we have to consider is time. So I'm working on this for someone else and between removing it, taking it apart, soaking it, putting it back together, buying a kit and then tuning it, I'm really about the same amount of money spent as would be just to buy a new carburetor. Um, it's kind of hard to believe for some people because you know their time doesn't, doesn't really count toward anything. If this was my personal car, that's the way I would go, but you know, if, if we're talking dollars and cents, it's a lot cheaper to just throw another carburetor on it. Um, the other thing is, that is the reason I think the car was parked to begin with. So, in talking to the owner, they were talking about how um, the car was letting out a whole bunch of black smoke and then would die and just wouldn't restart. So that tells me fuel problem, too much fuel, carburetor issue. So, anyway, I have a new one. Let's go look, take a look at it. So with ease of replacement, I could have gone back to a factory style, um, but you know this Edelbrock, it's a, I believe a 750, yeah, 750 CFM performer uh, from Summit Racing. These have been very good to me as kind of a plug and play type carburetor, and that's what I'm hoping it will do on this one. Um, it's basically identical to the one that's on the car, so it should, this one should come off, this one should go on, we fill it full of fuel, and the engine should run. I have put new spark plugs they're the old ones. I've put new spark plugs in all the way around. The motor is sat for a couple days without the plugs in it to let all that extra gas that um, went down into the cylinders to dry out. And then, yeah, let's get it on and see what happens. For the, what, three seconds, four seconds, it ran, it ran really well. So I think we're going back to the spark. I think we lost spark again because we're not getting anything from it. It's not chugging or, you know, trying at all. So back to that, probably should replace the points to tell you the truth. Took the old points out. I had an extra set laying around. Um, they're pretty nasty inside. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but um, we could probably clean them up with sandpaper, but they're best to be replaced. They're pretty thin. Um, so new points. 
See if we have a spark. No lights on the dash, no gen light, no oil light. He's running. Why are the headlights on? Maybe because it's automatic headlights. I don't know. He sounds really good. Maybe an exhaust leak or two. the fuel system so we got the car to run uh, we replaced the uh, carburetor but honestly the rest of the fuel system needs to be replaced that's one thing that you really don't want to go cheap on because fuel pumps will go bad because of age the lines will gum up varnish in the tank all that kind of stuff so the first thing I did was these tanks actually have a drain and I put the car back on uh, the tires and you can see it's draining some, there's something draining. It looks like I'm not catching it all. So that smells absolutely nasty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sacrifice about a gallon of gas to kind of flush as much as I can out of it. Um, I will take the air hose and blow out the air lines. And then Rock Auto is kind enough to send me I have a new fuel pump, I have a whole bunch of extra fuel line, and a bunch of fuel filters. So with all that done, the fuel system on this car should be brand new. Here we have the old pump, and installed is the new pump. I found it way easier to do this by removing the power steering pump and bracket. It's really just two bolts, you can move it up out of the way. You can do it without moving it, but it was just so much easier to do it, so that's what we're gonna do. It's installed, it's in, it fits really well. Um, it's a little bit different of a design, but uh, something weird about um, these pumps that I'm kind of not used to in a small block Chevy, it's basically square to the block, and this one's kind of, you can see it's kind of tilted toward the front of the engine. It's not perfectly square on there, but that's just how they are. We'll put everything back together, and Put some new hoses on it, new gas in it. See if we can't get gas from the tank. I took my jack and I jacked up the back of the tank in order to get everything to run to the front. And I think we're really close to having all the old gas out. So I've taken my jack and I lifted it up. And I jacked it up and getting a lot more gas out of the tank than I thought I was going to. I think I'm going to replace my bucket. Here is just a sample of what I got out of this Cadillac. So, straight up looks like pee. And remember, that's mixed with about a gallon of good gas, so imagine what it looked like when it wasn't mixed. Still have some to drain out. Um, we'll dispose of it properly. Then we'll put some new, fresh gas. Here's the fuel filter housing. It's a glass bowl. Um, interestingly, I thought this was going to be a stone filter from inside. It looked like it, but it's actually not. It's actually more of a a fiber board filter. But anyway, the way this works is this goes in here, then the gasket, then the bowl clamps it all together, and the fuel comes in right here, and then in order to get pushed out, it goes through the filter and then out this way. So that's the way that works. All right, guys, it is the next day, and we've made quite a bit of progress on this old Cadillac. And today, we're actually gonna get it to run for more than five seconds or 15 seconds or something like that. So to begin, the cooling system already topped off. 
um, but the fuel system is all brand new. So a new carburetor, we have new fuel return hose, we have a new fuel inlet hose, a new fuel pump, and a new fuel filter. Um, I also drained all the gas out of the back tank and put in five gallons of brand new gas. So um, right now we're going to start it up and check for leaks. If we have some leaks, we'll turn it off, fix the leaks, and then see if we can at least get the car up to temperature. I wanted to drive it today. I was like, well, you know, we're almost there. If it runs really well, we can drive it. But then I looked under here. We have almost no brake fluid in the front and completely nothing in the back. So there's no brakes on this car, which is to be expected. You know, it's all going to leak out, but you know, I was hoping to drive it. We're not going to drive it, but we'll, you know, we'll get it to run. That, that'll be, that'll be worth it, I think. any fuel yet. The fuel pump I'm put in, I think it's pumping, but the carb is not getting any gas. When I crank it, you can see kind of like the push of air inside this glass bowl. I took the filter out thinking, oh, maybe the filter is the problem, but it's still not getting gas. And the only way I can get it to run is off of brake clean. Um, it should, you know, be pumping gas just like that. So I'm thinking there might be some kind of blockage in the tank. I know there's a tank pickup screen in there that can get really gross. I didn't want to drop the tank, but I think I'm going to have to drop the tank. Well, I think I figured out why I'm not getting any gas from the tank. So there's this ancient old school uh, fuel pump, I guess. It has this, this green wire that runs all the way to a switch and the dash. Um, and the main feed line goes up to it, loops around, goes up into it, and then into the tank. I feel like that could be an obstruction of why there's no fuel getting picked up by the regular pump. So what I'm going to do to test, just first, before I remove it, I'm going to take these two fuel lines off, join them together, and then crank the engine and see if I can get fuel out that way. And if I can, then I will go ahead and replace these fuel uh, these fuel hoses that go from the hard lines to the actual gas tank all right figured out the fuel issue now we got leaks to figure out. So I finished running new uh, rubber hoses from the tank to the, the body lines. They don't look new because they got super dirty installing them. But what I didn't want, I didn't want to leave that in the line. I mean, these hoses probably would have worked. They're still pretty flexible, but you know, since I'm here, getting rid of that. So now we have good return, we have good fuel, and the car starts right up. All right, she's moving. The brakes sort of stop it. Our steering feels like it works, that's weird. Eh, maybe not. All right, we need to get this thing warmer so that we can see if the transmission needs fluid. So what we can do 
wait for it to warm up and then we can check the transmission fluid. I bet it needs some for sure. She's been idling for a while. A couple things I see, probably a leaky uh, valve cover gasket. Uh, the thermostat did open, it, it's hot on the top. There is pressure, so that is good. We have an exhaust leak over here. I put about probably two quarts of transmission fluid in the transmission. Hopefully that's enough to get it to uh, engage properly. Alright. Oh yeah, that engages much nicer. Do we dare take it on a drive? Fuel gauge works. Temp says hot. That I don't know about that. I think we're just gonna drive it up and down the driveway. <laughs> It made it, it turned it around. Uh, a couple things, it suddenly didn't really want to run very well. Uh, first off, I haven't done anything with the ignition or the carburetor, you know, that needs some tuning. Uh, the, the temp sender said it was super hot. I mean, it, it is hot. You know, 190 is, is where it's at, which that's not too bad. I'm curious if that's just a bad sender or what it doesn't you know it's not boiling over or anything like that i don't know where the sender the temp sender on this is it could be unplugged oil pressure's in the back but it needs brakes and it needs brakes bad are we leaking anything i can't tell underneath the car Nothing super bad so far, but the power steering worked ish. The brakes worked ish. <laughs> A lot of semi working things. I think the next thing I want to do though, is I want to, I want to put uh, brakes in it. You know, at least the, at least the uh, rubber parts, just because you can't really test drive much when you can barely stop. I don't want to do that. So yeah. I'm also going to wash it because it needs wash and it's filthy.